how to place an order at a restaurant when you're on a carnivore diet. Hey, what's shaking bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So it's interesting when you're on a carnivore diet because when you eat out, it can be difficult. You're eventually going to find what restaurants are agreeable with you on a carnivore diet. Because here's some things most people don't think about when they're on a carnivore diet and they eat out. Everyone knows when you go to a fast food restaurant, typically the food's not the best quality. You have to keep in mind this food is often processed. Even if you go to a nice restaurant, sometimes the meat is processed and you're thinking it's a steak. How can they just process a steak any different than just cooking it and serving it? Well, they do. And it's not always something that's beneficial for you depending on your sensitivity. So if you still have underlying inflammation in your diet, it could be one of these simple things that they're doing at a restaurant that might be affecting you. Maybe the food's been around for a while. So when I go to McDonald's, as an example, even if I get food without salt on it, any house seasoning, I still get a histamine reaction. So only McDonald's seems to do that for me. I can go to Five Guys, five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week, if I wanted, and I don't get that. But I get this histamine reaction where my skin gets dry and flaky on my forehead and on the rim of my nose. And it just gets a little flaky and crusty and then it scabs up and then I have this little red area. So what I find I have to do is avoid that food and limit it if I do go there, but it's still gonna be my go-to if I'm really hungry, I'm driving say a long distance and I need just a restaurant to get some food from. I will go to McDonald's, but I'm going to limit how much I eat. I might get two or three burger patties. For me, that's not very much, but it's enough to just tide me over until I get somewhere where I can eat. And the beautiful thing about a carnivore diet is, of course, you can go long windows of time without eating. And I'm not worried that if I go a long window of time that I'm going to eventually give in and have something off of a carnivore diet. It's just not an issue for me anymore. I've been doing this long enough. It's not a temptation in the slightest. It's simple old news for me. I'm old hat at it. It doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Any of those foods, I have no joy at all from looking at them, wanting to have them, or just craving them. It doesn't mean anything to me anymore. So obviously one of the main things you got to watch for is breading. You got to make sure you stay away from breading. When you go to a restaurant and you're eating something that was deep fried in oil, you have to watch that that food is one, not only just processed, but also the breading on it's no good. Keep in mind, those are bread crumbs. So you add all those bread crumbs together, even though it's a light layer together, that could be the equivalent of one or two slices of bread easily just enough to screw you up if you're dealing with sugar or carbohydrate withdrawals and you're constantly struggling on a carnivore diet. So when you get your wings, you have to often ask for them naked. So you want to make sure that your wings as well aren't cooked in vegetable oil. So right off the bat, you're going to find ordering wings really difficult. You're going to have to go to some place that serves their wings that hasn't been cooked in vegetable oil. Because I think that's a large thing that people do when they go to restaurants. They get wings. They're like, I'm safe because it's wings and there's no breading on it at all. It's not even dusted. But what happens is it's cooked in vegetable oil and then you still have some of these vegetable oils going through your veins and your arteries and it's still causing damage. Cooked seed oils are not healthy for you, especially the seed oils they use when they're deep frying food. Another thing is seasoning. You'd be surprised when you go to a restaurant, even ordering a steak or wings and you get a dry rub on it. So you're like, okay, I'm not having breading. I'm not having sauce. I'm just going to have a dry rub. So that's good. You'll find there's often sugar in the dry rub. It's often something that's store-bought. They rarely make it themselves. Some restaurants, if they have a good cook, they'll make you something that is sugar-free. They'll make their own little house rub for you. I have a restaurant in town that did it and they call it Bruno Seasoning. And it was really awesome. They did that for me. It was really nice. It was tasty. And it was something that I could have on a carnivore diet. I wasn't worried about sugar in the seasoning because you go out there and you buy some lemon pepper seasoning or some Cajun seasoning or anything like that. There's often sugar in the ingredient list. So you have to start reading these lists. You have to start finding out what works and what doesn't. If you have to bring something to the restaurant that you have purchased yourself that doesn't have anything in there that doesn't work. Slap your mama is a great seasoning for people, but I find even having slap your mama, I still get a histamine reaction. So I don't know if this is a salts issue or just a cured food issue or a histamine issue, but I still have to worry about having too much slap your mama. My nose gets all red and crusty and I don't want that. But it gets really difficult when you're playing it safe and you think, I'm going to a restaurant that just serves steak. I'm going to a steakhouse. Well, you'll find when you talk to them and they're real honest, they marinate most of their steaks at steakhouses and they put seasoning on there or often they cook it in oil. So they'll put oil on a grill and then they'll put the steak on it and then they're cooking with vegetable oil and you're like, ah. So you might have to ask if they can use butter instead of vegetable oil, if that's how they cook their steaks or their burgers, however it is that they do it, whatever it is that you're ordering. And you wanna make sure that 
you don't have any seasoning on there. And sometimes when they marinate it, they're like, you know what? Out of all the steaks on the menu, you have a choice of two that aren't pre-marinated. And at that point, most carnivores are like, I'll take it, whatever it is, no problem. But you have to ask these questions when you go to steakhouses. If you have a real sensitivity to some of these foods and you're, say, dealing with a weight stall or you're dealing with some health issues, that's where you have to take this to the next level. If you're dealing with cravings and you still feel like you haven't been craving free and you've been doing carnivore for three months or six months or a year and you're like, why am I still dealing with cravings? There's something in there. There's something in your diet that you're eating that you shouldn't be. And you have to really start breaking down what it is that you're eating. Is it bacon? When you buy bacon, they have to put a lot of sugar in bacon. They have to put a lot of sugar in bacon to balance out the fact that it's so salty. Kirkland brand, Costco brand bacon, they have a low sodium bacon. They have no sugar in it. It's really nice. So not only is it not too salty, so I'll have a whole pack at once. And quite frankly, I can have three or four packs at once. That's not an issue for me. But I'll have a pack with a few eggs typically for breakfast right now. One of the best things you can do is eat before you go out. If you eat before you go out, you're not going to be too hungry. And that way you're not going to risk having something off a carnivore diet. But this is what happens when you're a carnivore, or at least this is what happens to me being a carnivore when I go to a restaurant, especially a sit down restaurant. I say, yeah, I'll have this steak, please. And I'll have it with nothing on the side. And they go, OK, so would you like some French fries on the side with that or just a salad then? And it's like, no, no, nothing on the side, just a steak. Oh, OK, so you don't want a salad? And I'll say, just a steak, please. And they'll say, OK, but you you can have a potato. You're welcome to have a potato if you want. And I'll say, just a steak, please. And they'll like, well, you don't want anything on the side? And I'll say, just a steak, please. And it's usually quite entertaining for whoever is across from me because they get to watch this little song and dance every single time. You just keep polite. I have a smile on your face and just keep telling them I don't need any of that. Make sure they don't bring any bread to the table unless you're with somebody else and they want it. But typically it's simple to do. You just have to make it clear that you don't want any seasoning or vegetable oils cooked on or with that steak and you just don't want anything on the side. They have a hard time with that because sometimes they still bring your steak out and there's some sort of garnishing on it. And it's like, I was pretty clear with the waitress. I didn't want anything on the steak. So you have to be realistic. Some things you can just pick off. It's not a big deal, but it's tough to pick a sauce off. So if they use like a gravy or something on there, eh, you know, I'm not going to risk it for me. But some people, they might be fine with that. But when you go to a McDonald's drive through or Five Guys, they often have bunless options where you get your meat in a tray. And so it's really nice to go to these restaurants because those restaurants are everywhere. So you don't have to worry. There's always a fast food option. There's always a grocery store that's selling a roasted chicken. If you feel like there's a sauce on the chicken skin and you don't want to risk the sauce, you can literally just peel the chicken skin off. So it can be very manageable to eat out while you're doing a carnivore diet and order at restaurants and they usually are getting familiar with these options because they're worried about gluten sensitivities. You don't have to go on a huge rant and tell them how you're carnivore, but you can just say, no, it's a sensitivity. Five guys always ask, is this a food sensitivity or is this an allergy? Because they're worried about this sort of thing nowadays. So they're trying to tailor to a different market and what they don't realize they're doing is they're complementing a carnivore diet in the process, even though most of them who made these decisions have never even heard of the carnivore diet. So I want you to keep in mind, it's very manageable to still eat out. You're eventually gonna find the few places around your town that work for, well for you. And then from there, you can start trying new places one at a time and always be prepared to go somewhere else. So I went to a Burger King when I was in the States a couple weeks ago and they didn't have a bunless option. They wanted to charge me for each burger. So I was going to pay something like $10 for each patty. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I can just go to McDonald's and order each patty individually or I can go to Five Guys and they'll give me each patty individually. And it's in Canada, like $3 a patty. So in McDonald's, it's even cheaper for a burger patty. And believe it or not, they don't use filler, but I think their meat is aged. But you have to tell them no seasoning and no sauces, nothing on the side. And when they keep offering those options to you, you just have to keep saying, no, thank you. And being polite and just stick to your guns and there'll be nothing but accommodating for you at most places. Thanks a lot and take care.